Welcome to the Richard Blackby Leadership Podcast, helping people take their leadership to the next level. Brought to you by Blackby Ministries International. Well, Richard, we're taking a brief break from the Experiencing God study. We just wrapped up a four-part series on a one, marathon. Yeah, a marathon <laughs> on just one of those seven realities. Yeah. Uh, we know that that's been a blessing to many of our listeners, and, and we'll continue on to reality five, six, and seven. Uh, but right now, we're going to kind of pause from that. Every once in a while, we try and do a book review mm-hmm. uh, on a leadership topic. We've tended to uh, veer towards the classic leadership section, those books that have been around and perhaps stood the test of time. But, uh, you know, every once in a while we'll try and move it into, you know, the last 10 years or so. Uh, I don't think today <laughs> is, make it, uh, think. makes the no, cut. No. Um, uh, and it's and it's funny because uh, the name of the book that we're looking at today is called Margin. And funny enough, I did not have the margin to actually read this. <laughs> yeah. I tried to read these in advance. Yes. Behold um, Exhibit A. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So a case study, <laughs> if you will. Um, but tell us why we've we've picked this book. Obviously, I need more margin. So. Yeah, I'm glad you're here to hear this today. <laughs> Me too. I'll, uh, I'll be taking notes. Well, it's written by Richard Swenson, who's actually a, a medical doctor, an MD. And uh, the book is called Margin. And the subtitle is Restoring Emotional, Physical, Financial, and Time Reserves to Overloaded Lives. And the book was uh, originally came out in 1992, so now it's uh, so practically yesterday. Yeah, so it's one of the newer books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, I remember I I had uh, become a seminary president. Uh, well, I became one in 1993, just a year after this book came out, and uh, my life was uh, I'd been very busy as a pastor, but. Uh, now I'm running a denominational school with all kinds of needs. I'm having to travel a lot more. And uh, very quickly, I am maxed out. Marginless. Uh, I'm marginless. And this book, I, I, I came across this book uh, fairly early on in uh, that time period. And it was quite impactful. I wish it had had a greater impact on my life, but uh, I, are you saying that you wish you had, you know, done heated? more than just read it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I this always this became sort of one of those markers in my life that just kept on staring me in the face to remind me yeah. uh, that of what I needed to be striving for, and uh, and so the 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 book the margin itself is uh, just basically kind of talking about how most people live marginless lives. And of course, technology, when it, uh, it always heralds time-saving abilities. Now that we've got these smartphones and we, we have all these electronic uh, calendars and, and contacts and everything, and uh, everything is computerized now, so uh, we'll have, look at all this extra time we're gonna have now. Yeah. Because technology is creating all this time in our life. And we can get food delivered to our house. Yeah, like you just order, laundry, like, like this was written before Amazon was yeah. doing, you know, had prime memberships and uh, you could just order something and later that day, uh, even sometimes within a few hours, uh, things could be showing up at your doorstep. Yeah. And just think now, all the time you're saving, not running to the store. Uh, but the fact is, and this was in 1992, and already he is uh, saying things are out of control then, and I, I would uh, argue they haven't gotten any better. Yeah. Uh, he, he mentions a few things. He'll say, just kind of in his uh, preface there in the beginning, he says, uh, marginless is being 30 minutes late to the doctor's office because you were 20 minutes late getting out of the hairdresser's because you were 10 minutes late dropping the children off at school because the car ran out of gas two blocks from the gas station and you forgot your purse. Uh, <laughs> margin, on the other hand, is having breath left at the top of the staircase, money left at the end of the month, and sanity left at the end of adolescence. Uh, marginless is the baby crying and the phone ringing at the same time. Margin is grandma taking the baby for the afternoon. Marginless is being asked to carry a load five pounds heavier than you can lift. Margin is a friend to carry half the burden. Marginless is not having time to finish the book you're reading on stress. Margin is having the time to read it twice. Marginless is fatigue. Margin is energy. Marginless is red ink. Margin is black ink. Marginless is hurry. Margin is calm. 
Marginless is anxiety. Margin is security. Marginless is culture. Margin is counterculture. Marginless is reality. Margin is remedy. Marginless is the disease, he says, of the 1990s. Margin is its cure. So I think the, the analogy he uses is basically getting in a car and driving it with the pedal all the way to the floor. And uh, your car, depending on what your car is, but your car can probably handle that for a while. I've driven some cars that yeah. definitely could not have <laughs> no, handled that. <laughs> no, you couldn't. You, it was faster if you pedaled some of those cars, I think. But uh, I could walk faster, <laughs> I think. But uh, the, what he says is that's really a picture of how a lot of people are living their lives. Yeah. All out, going full, uh, full, full, full blast. And... But we all know that you can only sustain that for a limited amount of time before things start breaking down and overheating. It, it does create stress, anxiety, pressure. Yeah. It's more expensive in the in the long run to live that way because you've got to repair and you, things are worn out and have to be replaced. And so he says that picture of someone driving their car all out with nothing held back no reserves. If you've got to pass someone beyond that speed, you don't. You have nothing left. It's it's all out there. Uh, any crisis, any problem that comes along, any delay, there's no room uh, for error. Yeah. And and he would say that's what marginless living is like, and that's where many many people are living today. And I would say certainly leaders are particularly susceptible to marginless living. Hmm. So. I, I think everyone can relate to to that analogy that that it, you know you're you're just going full tilt all the time, no breaks. Uh, so how do we? How does he say at least that we sort of bring some balance, some margin into our lives? Well, he has a simple formula. I think that uh, it helps uh, with that at least, uh, so you kind of know what you're trying to get at, and uh, and what he would say is. Um, and yeah, we were kind of comparing this before here. <laughs> what is that? Power minus load equals margin. Equals margin. So power would is uh, it could mean your time, it could mean your money, could mean your energy, your strength. But uh, whatever, if you you know if you're talking about uh, margin in your calendar and your schedule, then time is your power. How much time you have. Now you subtract from that the load, whether in that case it be your commitments. Uh, the things you've scheduled. And whatever is left over is the margin. And his whole recommendation is you need to be striving to always have some margin. You, you can't be going all out. You can't fill every moment of your day with a commitment. You can't be spending all of your emotional energy just to get through a normal day. Uh, financially, you can't be spending every cent that you have in your paycheck every month. Because, of course, inevitably something unexpected happens. And right. so, you know, if you if you um, if you take your monthly income and by the time you paid your mortgage, all of your utilities, expenses, gas expenses and so on, uh, if there's nothing left, you basically your your paycheck just barely covers all of your monthly expenses. Then the moment that your transmission goes out in your car, the moment that there's all of a sudden an expensive uh, medical expense or something that comes along that you hadn't budgeted for, you've got you. Then you're it's you're over the top. Now you're in you're in the red. You're in debt. Uh, you've got to put things on a credit card uh, that are, that's going to be charging you high interest and so on. And so, his whole point is you we we know that we should have margin, but uh, for instance, we know we should be putting some money in savings every month, but then something always comes up and we, mm -hmm. because we are in a house with a high enough mortgage and because it costs a lot for utilities, uh, it, it just chews up all of our available income. And so he would say in all these major areas, physically, emotionally, time wise, financial wise, in those four primary areas, you, you need to always be uh, going through the day, through the month intentionally not investing everything you have, keeping some reserves so that when there is a crisis, when all of a sudden your best friend is killed in a car accident uh, or you or you lose your job, you emotionally 
you're not right at the very breaking point already before that happens. You've got reserve enough to uh, to be able to rebound from the emotionally traumatic experiences that inevitably come to everyone. Same with finances. You might, you know, on a normal month where you don't have any unexpected bills, you might just barely be getting by. But that's not what happens. There's always an unexpected expense. And so where's your margin? You, you, and, and so he would say that that comes from a lot of uh, intentional choices that you make. Mm-hmm. You, you can't wait until the crisis comes and then say, oh, okay, I've got to build margin in my life now. You've got to be living marginless. Or you have to be living a life with margin so that when the, the unexpected occurs, you've got reserves. Mm. Yeah, that's great. Let's let's take a quick break here and then we'll dive deeper into this book. Ready to take your leadership to the next level? The Entrepreneurial Leaders Program is a one-week intensive course at Oxford University designed to help marketplace and entrepreneurial leaders develop the skills they need to have a greater impact on their business and community. Don't miss this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to study under Dr. Richard Blackaby and other leadership experts at one of the world's most prestigious academic institutions. This transformational course will run from August 11th through 19th, 2019. For more information or to register, visit entrepreneurialleaders.com. The link will be in the show notes. Richard, let's look at the uh, sort of a little deeper dive into the areas that, that he says you should have margin in. Yeah, well, the first one is emotional energy. And I think certainly leaders face all kinds of emotional drains. There's a lot of pressure on leaders. You're on yeah. the stage a lot. If there is a problem in the organization, you you end up having to deal with it and, and sometimes tackling some pretty messy issues, uh, emotional issues. And so uh, what do you do so that your emotional tank isn't empty? And probably we've all worked for people, uh, for managers who were running on empty yeah. So any problem that there, it just made them cranky. Any, any, you didn't want to bring another problem to them because, uh, you, you could just tell they don't need any more bad news. Um, yeah. they just chewed out the last two direct reports that came in with bad news and they're emotionally empty. Um, and so, uh, different, uh, ways, uh, I, in fact, I just talked with a leader not long ago who had been leading well and been doing a lot of great things, but it had to confront some underperforming staff. It had to let a staff person go and, uh, doing what leaders have to do. But all of those, all of those, uh, leadership acts create a withdrawal emotionally from you. It costs you emotionally yeah. to do hard things, to confront people, uh, to hold them accountable, to wade into messy situations and to clean them up. And so, uh, if what the problem with a lot of leaders is they're going all out withdrawing emotional energy all the time, but they're not doing things to put emotional energy back in. They're not filling the tank back up. And so inevitably you end up with people, leaders burning out. Uh, certainly pastors do this a lot. They pastors are, are giving out all the time with uh, helping other people in their crises, but they're not doing anything to fill their tank back up. And so you've got to have some margin so that, because there's always some emotionally disturbing thing that happens. And I, perhaps you've had this experience where maybe you, I, I know this happened to me a while ago where I, I heard about a minister that I knew that had fallen in immorality. And it really hit me hard and I was really shaken by it. And, and I unfortunately hear that kind of news relatively often and I, I felt as if, boy, why is this one hitting me so hard? Uh, you know, it, it's not like I haven't heard this before, but I think what it was, was I was on empty. And if you ever experience yourself getting more emotional than you normally would, that may well indicate I, emotionally, I don't have any margin. So, yeah. so any bad news, any emotionally draining experience, and I, I, I don't have reserves. I, I, I can't respond properly. I'm, I find myself in tears. Uh, I find myself angry or upset or troubled and anxious, and I don't know why. So he, he would say a number of things, you know, like uh, everything from just intentionally build friendships. A lot of times leaders don't have friends, uh, no one close to them. They feel like I can't share the stress I'm going uh, through with anybody because I'm the boss. Um uh, 
I've always had a group of guys that I would try to meet with regularly. I've, oftentimes in my life, uh, I've had a prayer partner that I would meet with uh, maybe once a week and just pray together about things that were stressful to me. And that always made me feel better. I look forward to those times, just to have a, a friend that would pray with me about the load I was carrying. He says, you need to get enough rest. You know, certainly physical rest leads to emotional uh, stability and strength. He, he'd say, get a pet. Uh, I, sometimes I found uh, some of my pets caused me a lot of emotional yeah, drain. Yeah, that, 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 that's a dub, uh, you uh, know, double-edged sword there. So, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it could be things like he says, even just reconcile relationships. Yeah, if you have a broken relationship, uh, that could be a slow drain on you emotionally. You don't even realize how much it's draining you. Uh, be grateful for the things that are good in your life that God is doing. Uh, some, don't try not to ever go too long without laughing. Yeah. If, if you've gone uh, weeks without laughing, that's probably an indication that you're running on fumes at this point. Yeah. There's times where even crying is a really good release. I'm, I'm a guy, so I don't. I say that to kind of cautiously, but uh, <laughs> but there are times where emotionally, it's it's like an earthquake. It's like some of the plates in our, our emotions have to settle a bit and yeah. shift a bit. And sometimes that means laughing, sometimes crying, but it means there's a lot of tension there that needs to get released somehow. Yeah. Try to always find someone. I was just at a, a convention meeting and uh, I connected with some of my old uh, accountability friend partners that uh, I, I used to meet with regularly when I was in a different job and lived in a different part of the of, of North America. But uh, we just got together for lunch and we're laughing again. You know, we, we don't see each other nearly as often as we used to, but, uh, uh, but we all just kind of realize, you know what, it just, when you have a lot of responsibility, it's just great to have people you can let your hair down with and yeah. laugh, tell silly jokes, you know, just... Be well, kind of crazy. If I know you, you were telling puns. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, that can have the opposite effect. Let's be honest. <laughs> well, it might cause some people to cry, but so yeah, emotionally, that's one of the, those areas that leaders, I think, often are not aware of the drain that is taking yeah. place. Almost a steady drain. But if you're putting in all nighters and long days at the office, and um, but you've not just taking time to just go to a movie with your wife and maybe go to a comedy or, or a, a, a live show or just, or a, a, a vacation or something. Yeah. Just to turn your emotional brain off for a bit, your, those feelings, the, the stressors and just relax. Yeah. Uh, then you're, you're living marginlessly. I think that's what, you know, a, kind of a free way to do that is, is exercise. I think yeah. I, I've found certainly that if you're under a lot of stress, you know, sometimes just putting on the sneakers and, and going for a run or yeah. whatever your exercise of choice is can really be a, a release of a lot of that tension. Yeah, I've uh, if I can ever get to where I can run as like 10k as I keep wanting to get to, uh, but you know, and of course those those first two physical and emotional energy are so closely related, right. uh, and physical as well. I see a lot of leaders, and I tell you, that's my challenge is if I'm home uh, for a, a solid week, I'll try to go out running several days a week. I'll I'll eat better. I'll rest better. But when I'm on the road, I'm, I'm flying into a different time zone. I've got an early breakfast meeting. Uh, the restaurant doesn't have a lot of healthy choices, and I don't want to hold up everybody else while I'm agonizing over the menu, trying to find something that's decent to eat. Then I just order the fried shrimp and just just forget about it. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and so, you know, the the uh, but when you feel good, when you're not carrying extra weight, uh, when you have... And, and it's all tied together, of course, because right. because then it goes into the time part as well. And for me, if there's no margin in your time, then you, you think, well, I need to exercise. I need to go into the exercise room at the hotel, but uh, I, I, I still need to look over my notes and uh, I'm getting picked up in 30 minutes at the hotel. And I, so I, I just don't have the time right now. And so, uh, I you know, we, we've looked at some of the... Um, uh, the leadership gurus uh, 
that have suggested, for instance, that you don't schedule every part of your day. We we think we're being really effective leaders if we've scheduled our day down to every 15-minute segment. But the fact is then when all of a sudden an important phone call comes in or a crisis emerges and your VP comes in and says, hey, we've got this issue at the bank, um, if if you've scheduled every 15 minutes of your day, you don't have time uh, or you're going to have to take time, but that's going to throw everything else out of sync. Uh, It's going to put everything else behind. It means you're going to probably be staying at work late. You're going to be trying frantically to catch up the rest of your day. And you do that day after day, and your emotions, your physical uh, strength, everything is going to be affected by that. Yeah. So he also talks about time and finances. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, I, I think as Peter Drucker, who said, you don't start with your, your, your task to do, you start with your time. Yeah. You look at the time you have and say, how do I manage this so that it's not managing me? Uh, let me, let me decide what is important. If, if I can at least get the three or four or five most important things done today, then I don't, I, I, I'm going to feel much more comfortable and less stressed than if I zigzag back and forth between important and unimportant and, yeah. uh, and got behind and then never did take care of a couple of really crucial issues that I needed to. Yeah. I think our time can really become fractured. I've, I've seen that. Yeah. As well, that you're just, you know, 10 minutes this way, 30 minutes that way, back and forth, and and it just seems like you're spinning your wheels. Yeah, I found it's way more efficient if I have blocks of time, and I put important matters into those blocks, and then if, uh, when you got a block of time, you may finish 15 minutes early on one, and you've you've just put some margin in your day. You can actually go do a quick walkabout in the office suite area and check in on some of the other folks, or you could, now you got time to answer some emails earlier or whatever else. Uh, I, th- then, of course, uh, the the last one is finances. And we all know this, but if you've committed every dime that you earn each month to uh, some uh, some bill or expense, then yeah. there's always some unexpected expense that comes along. It might be a great opportunity to, hey, go out here in this, uh, the, you've got some good friends going on a cruise and they want you to come with them and it's a great deal, but it's still, it's money you hadn't budgeted for or, um, here's a chance to purchase something. It's a great price, half the normal price, but still you didn't have that in your budget. And before you know it, uh, your, your finances are marginless and you're in the red, you're paying interest rates, uh, and you're not saving like you should. you now you're vulnerable to another, uh, thing that comes along that's unexpected. Yeah. And so to he would just say intentionally don't spend all the money you have. If that means you've got to get a cheaper house with a lower mortgage, if it means that you you just have one car instead of two cars, uh, if it means that you don't take quite as expensive of a vacation, but now that means that you're going to be able to live comfortably within your means and have some uh, leftover money in reserve in case a crisis comes along. If with time you don't budget every minute of your day, you've got some blocks there that uh, if something comes along, you can adjust uh, physically that you're making sure that you're doing making healthy choices so you've got more energy uh, so that you're perhaps sleeping better. Uh, it means that you you may make some choices to say, well, normally I stay up for another hour or so. Uh, at night and just check social media or watch a late night movie. But uh, th- that's meaning I've got no margin. It means that yeah. if I don't sleep well with the few hours I've got left, then in the morning when I w- would normally have a quiet time, when I would normally get up and exercise, I won't feel like it. So I just will skip that day and things just begin to snowball. And so just a simple, it's a simple concept, but one that I, over the years, over the decades, I keep coming back to, to say, am I, is there margin in my life right now? Have I factored in, scheduled in, budgeted in margin so that uh, as life happens, I'm not just thrown off my horse every time a surprise comes along, but uh, I've got the margin to adapt, to adjust. I've got some reserves. If all of a sudden I do need to put in a couple of late nights at work, I, I'm I'm rested, I'm healthy, uh, I can handle the surprises now and then. Uh, because I've I haven't been living my whole life with my foot right to the 
to the on the pedal right to the metal well i think it's a great reminder and uh something that that we can all have more of yeah and uh yeah and uh speaking of of uh books what are we looking at for the, our next book review? Well, Sam, I thought we'd go with a different book. Again, this one I've used uh, in, I, I teach doctoral seminars on leadership, and oftentimes uh, I've thrown this particular book into the mix. It's different. It's, at first uh, glance, it's a little offensive to some even. I've had people tell me that oh, this, boy. when they began reading this. Do I need to change the rating <laughs> on this podcast? Yeah, well, <laughs> it's uh, for adults only here. Uh, but it's called The Character of Leadership, and the uh, subtitle is Political Realism and Public Virtue in Nonprofit Organizations, and it's by Michael Jenkins and Deborah Bradshaw Jenkins. Uh, and uh, I, it, basically, it's going to take a look at Machiavelli, of course, famously the author of The Prince, who uh, has, uh, through history, has looked at him as a devious cynical, negative, controlling, power, hungry sort of person. But uh, he says some interesting things uh, because, uh, and again, like I would say with probably most, if not all of the books that we review, just because I highlight them doesn't mean I agree with everything they say. Right. But uh, sometimes they do bring out an interesting uh, perspective or truth that I think is worth chewing on. And this particular one He's going to talk about the fact that there's a lot of naive leaders out there who mm. are very uh, optimistic, very vision oriented, but we often get sideswiped by the negative reality of our situation. Mm. He says we leaders often make the mistake of leading the organization they think they have rather than the organization they actually have. Mm. And so he talks about political realism to say, do you just take a hard look at the people you're working with, the organization as it is, so that you can respond to it appropriately. And and perhaps so you're not sideswiped, bushwhacked by things that if you'd been looking a little more carefully, you could have seen some things coming. Yeah. Uh, but if you're a little too naive, uh, then you're going to be constantly sur- caught by surprise and disappointed in people. So you, you want to be careful how far you go in the Machiavellian um scheme of things, but um, but it, it's probably worth at least talking about maybe some of the darker side of leadership and yeah. working with people, how to maybe not be naive, uh, but at the same time, uh, at the same time, you don't want to become just a cynic either. And so there's kind of a middle ground there, I think, that would be helpful for us to talk about as we talk about leadership. Well, I look forward to attempting to read it before <laughs> our next hopefully you've got more margin than yeah, you had the well, last for the now last that book. I now that I know how to have margin we should definitely have that <laughs> <laughs> thanks for listening to the podcast if this is something you enjoyed review us on Apple Podcasts and don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends if you have questions or comments please email us at podcast at blackbee.org